Hello, everyone. This is Old School from Weatherbuck.net with a preview for the New Orleans Saints game this week. Uh, the Buccaneers come into this game with a 3-1 and record that no one in their right mind other than me would have predicted before the year started with our loss coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers at home, uh, soundly thumped, uh, which has given enough fodder for people to continue to think that we're not for real. And, and realistically, uh, it's understandable. After coming off of the year we had last year with the amount of youth we have, uh, we've got to put a couple of wins on some teams that people give credit for, regardless of whether that credit is earned or not, before anyone will give us any sort of uh, acknowledgement, uh, certainly anyone in the national media. So we, we have the Saints coming in, uh, Super Bowl champions, struggling a little bit, 3-2, and two, uh, two losses, one to Atlanta, one to Arizona last week. A, a number of balls bounced against them. Uh, I don't believe Arizona scored offensive points at all. Uh, but but this is a team that their own press are saying are in a must-win situation this week early in the season against uh, the Buccaneers at home, uh, who, who, you know, they, they put it on us at home last year. Now, when we played them in New Orleans, we got a win against them that, that people are continuing to write off as well. So when we go into this game, we're going to look at both sides of this, this lineup. Drew Brees, probably a top three quarterback in the league, has not been – uh, the Drew Brees of old. Now, a lot of that's got to go to the fact that the New Orleans offense has been staggered with the injuries to Reggie Bush uh, and Pierre Thomas. We got Liddell Betts and Ivory back there, uh, who, while serviceable, uh, are turnover machines. This definitely hampers Sean Payton's ability to call his plays. Uh, Drew Brees is having to take a lot more checkdowns because no one's having to respect the running game, which, of course, throws a monkey wrench into the works for that entire offense and causes problems. Now, offensively, they're still going to rate out higher than we are when you look at the offense yards per game. They're 10th and scoring their 18th. That's the surprising one. This is a team that used to put you know, 30 points on everybody. They're averaging 19.8 points a game. We're at 21 and 18.5 points a game. So offensively, this team is struggling significantly. Now on the defensive side of the ball, and the defensive resurgence last year really kind of was one of the things that, that got the Saints over that hump. Um, they're still, you know, ninth in, in yards, but 17th in scoring with about the same we are, 20.4 versus 20. Now, when you look at the breakdown of these two teams, a couple of things scream out at you, and, and, and I'll intersperse uh, the Buccaneers' data along with the New Orleans Saints' data. Uh, a couple of things scream out about the Buccaneers. One, we can't run the ball worth a damn uh, unless you're Josh Freeman. And two, we can't get any pressure on the quarterback to speak of. Uh, one of the most telling stats is that Cedric Ellis of the Saints has three sacks and our whole defense has four. And that is no bueno, as my man Sean would say. Now, with that being said, our defense is still getting some big plays. We've got nine interceptions in the year. We've got a plus five turnover ratio versus a minus one for the Saints. And really, Raheem has been has been rolling the dice with the coverage, and in some cases not dialing up the blitzes, like I mentioned before, against Pittsburgh to try and set up his defensive backs for the opportunity to make the picks. It, at the Pittsburgh game, we didn't make the plays. But we have made the plays against Cincinnati. I'll keep the lead with an interception in every game. Uh, our boy coming in here, Cody Grimm, making the pick six last week after having a little bit of a stumble on the big play against Mike Wallace, uh, playing well. And, and Savvy Piscatelli making the clutch interception off the deflection last week from Mocho Cinco to set up the game-winning field goal after the completion of Michael Spurlock. Now, Drew Brees uh, is not known for turning the ball over. This year I think he's a 9-5 to TD to interception ratio. I've got that data here somewhere. Yeah, 9-5. to But when you look at the data about Drew Brees, under no pressure he's a 100 QB rating guy. No surprise there. Uh, pressure does affect guys. He drops to 60.8. He's going to read blitz as well. So if it's pressure generated by a non-blitz situation, he's going to get the ball. He's got about an 85 uh, QB rating there. Carson Palmer was much better. We didn't blitz him that much. He still was uh, able to turn the ball over. I would expect to see Raheem do some of the same stuff we saw last week where we're going to roll coverage to the blitz side when we do send pressure. Uh, and I expect to see the Bucks try and take advantage of the weak link, which is on the Saints' offensive line. Now, our offensive line, my God, the whole thing looks weak, and that pains me because I do like Davin and, and Jeff, who will be out. Jeff Bain, our starting center, is out with a quad injury. We'll have Jeremy Zuda in at center with Kedrick Vincent at left guard. But the tackles, uh, Donald Penn with his big contract and Jeremy Trueblood with his slow feet have been absolutely abysmal. Now, fortunately, when we look at the Saints offensive line, they have a similar problem with ex-Buccaneer John Stinchcomb and uh, Mr. Bushrod there. Uh, those guys are giving up a lot of QB pressures. We look at it 12 and 18 uh, respectively. Now, what that sets up for us is a chance for Styles White to have one of his on-again, off-again games where he's on again, even though he's not on turf where Styles does much better. I expect to see Styles come up big in this game. I also think Gerald McCoy is going to finally put some of these things together and get a chance to get some push in the middle. But probably the biggest key to this is going to be that left end where with Kyle Moore's injury we'll see more of either Crowder or Bennett and I expect to see both of those guys get some pressure in there on Drew Brees, which hopefully will lead to some turnovers 
uh, on the defensive side of the ball. The keys to the game for me this week are relatively clear. If we don't find a way to run the ball, eventually we are doomed. Now, I happen to think that the team still has more faith in Cadillac, even though his uh, legs are not what they used to be. I think he gives us our best opportunity. I do see change of pace with Huggins and Blunt. But I think Caddy's going to be able to get some things put together this week, and whether it's by pulling in John Gilmore more uh, or actually using a, a fullback other than Ernest Graham, no, no slight to Ernest Graham, uh, we have got to, uh, to get this running game untracked and give Josh a chance uh, to, to really open up the offense. Mike Williams dinged up. He's going to play. Uh, but we're going to see really as Ben have a chance to get more action as well. Now, on the Saints side of the ball, we already talked about the running game. Drew Brees seems to show a, a, a particular affinity for the middle of the field. This is going to pose a problem when we try and drop out of our cover two sets. We're going to have to make sure we're protecting against the seam routes uh, and the posts because Drew Brees is not to be trifled with. He's got plenty of weapons uh, at the receiver position as well and is not afraid to use them. So, you know, it's one of those things where as a Bucks fan, uh, we've got to get some wins against some quality opponents because uh, no one's going to give us any credit until we do. And the Saints still, even though they're rated below us, you know, when you look at their people, uh, the, the first guy on the uh, video post I saw earlier on Joe Bucks fan was uh, predicting a 40 to 10 victory by the Saints. So until we put up a couple more wins, uh, no one's going to give us any credit, and by God, they shouldn't. I do see us winning this game. I think we're going to defend home field. I think we're going to get a 24 to 17 victory. I do expect Caddy to have a big game. And I think Gerald McCoy uh, is going to step up as well and, uh, and remind people why we drafted him as high as we did. Now, one point, people have been all over Brian Price. Brian Price has four QB pressures, which puts him third on the team uh, behind McCoy and uh, behind Price, or behind, uh, oh my goodness gracious, did I forget, Kyle Moore, surprisingly enough, with five. Uh, the interesting thing with Brian Price, though, is his four QB pressures come on 77 snaps versus Roy Miller's 139 snaps. So I expect to see Brian Price get a little bit more time, a little bit more burn in there at that tackle tackle spot. And, and hopefully produce some results for us in the, uh, in the defensive side of the ball. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll see you guys after the Saints game where hopefully we'll be 4-1 and one and people will continue to say that we're not for real and that the Saints were only 3-2 and two and now they're a 500 ball club. And until we beat a real team, we don't really mean anything. And I'm perfectly okay with that.